Hey everyone, today I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to get better performance out of FL Studio 20. This should help you out, especially if you have bigger projects and you're noticing a lot of lag or CPU crackling, things like that. I hope this does help you out, let's go ahead and get right into it. So to demonstrate straight off, I'm going to show you how smooth this is running. This is not a big project, however, it's something I just made in like half an hour. But you will see, especially when I look at plugins, there's not a lot of lag, and it's running fairly decent. Let's go ahead and demonstrate that now. You see here, I've got some big plugins, and they're not lagging visually or at all, and overall that's a much better experience when you're producing music. So the very first thing I want to mention, and this is probably one of the most important, is simply pressing one key on your keyboard, and I found this solves a lot of these issues for me, that being F12. I like to think of it as kind of a magic button, it does seem to function that way. All it really does is close all of your plugins, not even permanently, just the visualization. Because those things can get to be very laggy, especially things like Pro-Q3, because you've got a visualization of your entire track, and that does take up more CPU than you'd think. So when you're working on things for a bit and you do have plugins open, try to get in the habit of once in a while pressing F12, I know I've kinda got it as muscle memory now, I use it everywhere. And once you notice a bit of visual lag, that should come in handy. To demonstrate what that lag does look like, I'm going to just open a whole bunch of things and then try to move around an EQ point, because this will demonstrate what it's not supposed to look like. Open everything. That should be it. Yeah, here we go. You see how unresponsive it is? Like, I'm not sure if it's translating well from me doing it to the video, but when I'm moving this, it's very choppy, it's not smooth like it once was, and if I just simply press F12 and then do it again, you can see this is way more smooth. So F12 is going to be your best friend with this, it should help you out quite a bit, I know it does for me. But now we're going to get into changing some settings. So at the top of FL Studio, press Options, go into General Settings, and scroll up to the top, and then you're going to see Animations, and it's going to default, I think, to keep it sober or make it pretty. Now if you have a lower end PC, you're going to want to set this to Don't Distract Me, it's going to get rid of any unnecessary animations. If you've got a really good PC, you could put it on Entertain Me and it will look nice, but it's completely unnecessary, so it's up to you. I like to leave mine on Make It Pretty, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. But if you don't want the bare minimum, Keep It Sober will be a good amount. So from here, you're done with the General tab, and you can go to Audio, and there's a couple of things you're going to want to change here. First off, your input and output device. You're gonna want to use ACO for this by any means, because I found that will give you the best performance and you won't really get any issues with crackling, like you would if you leave it on the primary sound driver, for example. But this is not going to be universal, because I do know in my instance, for example, when I want to use my speakers, I need to change it to this, or just change my output device. So you will need to experiment to see what you could actually change it to for it to work, but try to get this working because you will notice some substantial gains in performance. From there, you're going to have the option to change your buffer length. Now on bigger projects, you might find you have to change this to 1024, or even 2048 for it to run well, but this is basically how long it's going to take for it to start playing once you hit play on a track. If you've got a smaller track, like for example what I have in the background here, you could totally get away with setting that to 256, you're not going to notice any problems, it'll run just fine, but I like to keep mine in the middle ground of 512. From there, priority, make sure you've got that set to highest, and then at the very bottom there's one more thing you're going to want to change. You'll have the option for resampling quality, a lot of people say you're not going to notice a difference at all between the lowest quality and the highest quality, and if you even try to use the highest one, you will get a bit of a warning message saying that it's going to be very CPU intensive, so you can go ahead and set that all the way to the lowest and it should not matter. I almost forgot to mention there is a couple more things you want to change up here. You see what I have set for these two options, multi-threaded generator processing and multi-threaded mixer processing. Make sure you've got that on, and it does say at the very top of the project may increase CPU performance, so definitely give that a try. And from here, you're done in this menu. So we do have two more tips here that should help you out. If you go into the Tools menu, and then from there go to Macros, make sure that you do select Switch Smart Disable for all plugins. This will make it that when a plugin is not being used, it's going to disable itself, which is always good for squeezing out some extra performance. And the last thing, and this is probably another very important one, is consolidating your different tracks. You can't see this because I did actually demonstrate this on a previous recording this video, but unfortunately I messed up, I've had to redo it a couple times now. But this instance on track 3 was originally a serum patch, which had a lot of effects on it. I was running it onto 3 here, and it had 8 out of the 10 slots that it gives you, and 2 of those were very CPU intensive, being Fresh Air and Soothe 2. So those are plugins that are great, but definitely come at a huge performance cost, so you'll want to render those, as I've done here. The way you do that is you right click on the track, then from there, go to Consolidate Tracks. You'll choose from Track Start if you want it to be from wherever it begins, or Song Start from the very beginning. Just render it from there and it will replace it. It will not actually get rid of those plugins unless you do it yourself though. But if you're completely satisfied and you don't want to make any more changes to the element, you're free to do that. 
And then go ahead and reset the mixer to default, for example, if you want to just quickly get rid of everything. And then you should be good, that element will no longer be taking up CPU. That is something I like to save for the end though, because like I said, once you've done that, you're not able to make any more changes to that element unless you go back into the patch itself that you haven't deleted. And overall, that's pretty inconvenient, so only do that if you're completely set on your idea and you're only doing it to save CPU. Anyways, those are all of my tips. I hope those do help you out. Let me know if it did in the comments below. I'm going to let the track play out in full now. I know it's not much, but I do like the idea and I hope you do as well. Subscribe for more content from me in the future and I'll see you in the next one.